Hey everyone, I'm Jack Watson, full-time UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, donut connoisseur, and I'll be your host for today's Illustrator Illustration Challenge. Today we are going to be using the 3D tools to create some icons in perspective. Uh, I'm going to show you my blueprint method, which is what I like to use to uh, troubleshoot, I guess, uh, creating icons in different perspectives. Um, you can find links in the description below this video to other challenges, our Creative Cloud communities on Discord, as well as a link to download your free resources to create along with us, including the file that we're going to look at today. So let's head on over to our starter file in Illustrator. I've got some notes off to the side, as well as this little diagram down here, which we're going to look at in a minute. This is for your reference to orient yourself in 3D. I think it's easier um, for today's challenge to start with a theme. So I'm going to be working on some fruit icons, uh, but feel free to pick whatever theme you'd like. Step one is easy. Uh, whoop, there we go. Step one is going to be opening up some panels. You're going to want to make sure we've got our 3D and materials panel open. That's going to be under window. It'll be the very first one at the top. Uh, it's checked on for me because I've already got it open up. And uh, while we're in here, we might as well open up the uh, appearance panel as well. It's checked on because I've got it kind of docked over here below my 3D and materials. Um, you can just kind of drag these uh, windows to kind of dock them into place. The other thing that we're going to turn on since we're getting set up is under view. And this is a personal preference. This is just what I like to have turned on. Uh, under view, I've got smart guides turned on. I pretty much always have smart guides turned on. They are super handy to help me with some alignment and snapping things into place. So, like I said, we're going to be making some fruit icons today. Uh, we're going to be starting with the strawberry since we've got Valentine's Day coming up. I'd recommend for this challenge you pick something that's easy for you to visualize or reference. And to get started, let's switch on over to our rectangle tool. If you don't see it in your tools panel, just click and hold on any one of these uh, shape tools and select the rectangle tool. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here on our first artboard. And I'm just going to hold down shift and drag to create a uh, square here, creating just a perfectly square square with the shift tool. And I'm going to switch over to my selection tool. And as I hover over the corner, I can hold down shift and rotate. You can see my cursor changes to that little rotate icon. It's going to let me rotate in 45 degree increments. So um, I like to just kind of use simple shapes to block in my design. This first one's going to be a more classic kind of uh, 2D front view of a strawberry that we're going to use the inflate over here to kind of bring to life. So we have our shape turned here. I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool, which is this white arrow over here. And I'm going to click on the top point and I'm just going to drag that down. You can see that smart guides let me kind of keep everything straight. <laughs> We've got a live chat if you're joining us over here on Beance or on uh, the Adobe Live YouTube channel. You can chat with us, ask questions. Corey's asking, uh, saying that's not a square, that's a diamond. Yes. And then I'm just going to drag this bottom point down. And so you can kind of see we're starting to build out our strawberry if you kind of squint really hard. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is with the direct selection tool, I'm just going to drag to select the two outside points. So I've got the point on the left and the point on the right. I did that backwards, left and right. Selected, and we get these little round indicators here. These are live corners. Um, if I drag these, I can round out the side so we can start to get uh, more of that classic strawberry shape. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drag those in quite a bit. And then I'm gonna click on the top point and then I'm gonna do the same thing, dragging down to completely round the top out. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna click on that point and I'm just gonna drag it up to round it out a little bit, right? There we go. The real trick to working in 3D, if you're working with Substance or Illustrator, is to start by breaking down the thing you're trying to represent into simple shapes, uh, depending on the 3D effect that you're going to use. Um, I'm going to go over here and double click into my fill color, and we're going to add a strawberry color to this, right? We're going to go all the way up into the sort of like the pink reds. I'm going to bring it over a little bit, just like that, something like that looks good. And I don't want a stroke on this, so I'm going to click to bring the stroke forward. You could either do that over here in the toolbar or in the color window. And then down here in the swatches panel, I'm just going to hit this first one, none, to remove my stroke color. 
All right, so I am going to show you a little trick here, and it's going to pay off big time in the end later. Uh, so I'm going to go with my strawberry select, and I'm going to hit Command G, and I'm going to make a group. And I'm actually going to apply all of my 3D effects to the group. When you apply an effect to a group, it applies it to, to everything that's inside of that group. So if we add new things into that group later, it's going to have the exact same lighting, the exact same settings that we applied to our initial object here. So that's where we're going to apply it to a group. So we've got our strawberry. I hit Command G to make a group, and then I'm going to hit uh, Inflate. Ta-da! We're done. No. <laughs> um, we've got our strawberry here now with a little bit of dimension. Um, I am just using it with uh, um, rotated so it's just facing the front. That's going to be uh, an easy place to start. And then we're going to go over to our lighting uh, panel. I can, you can change the appearance of your um, objects really easily with the lighting panel without even getting into any materials. So let's kind of break down what each of these sections is doing. Up at the top here, uh, you can think of this whole top area as being like a spotlight. We're, we're lighting our object with like a spotlight. So at the top, each one of these little icons is a preset that you can choose, and you can see that they all have a little circle on them that shows you where the light is going to be placed. So if we pick top left, for example, you can see that my highlight moves to the top left and my shadow moves down to the bottom. If we turn on our shadow, it's actually a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to enable shadows, and it's going to add a, a long shadow down here, cast shadow. If we scroll back up to our options, um, increasing the intensity is the first option that's going to let us change how bright or dark our, um, or how strong our light is, how light or dark our shadows are. So. Uh, we can kind of bring that up if we want it to be a little bit brighter. I did skip over one option that I really want to call out because it's really, really important. Um, if we double click into our color at the top here, you can actually change the color of your um, light, which I find to be really, it really, really changes the whole look and feel of everything. So it can alter like the temperature of the light, right? And it gives your object either a warmer or a cooler feel depending on what you pick. So. I really want to amp up the like reds in my strawberry, so I'm going to go and I'm going to just choose a warm light to add to this. So my spotlight on my object is going to have a little bit of a warmer tone. You don't want to go crazy with this. If you go really, really saturated, it will make it like really, really intense. I'm just going to bring it, you can see, very, very subtle into the warmer tones. And that's just going to overall give my strawberry a little bit of warmth. We go down to uh, the next setting now, skipping intensity since we went over that, to rotation. This is going to be the position of your light in your space. So if we drag this around, you can see it's easier to see with the shadow turned on because we can tell where that light is kind of moving, right? So as I drag it sort of from its original place here in the upper left around, it's going to move to the bottom left, to the bottom, to the bottom right, to the upper right. So we can move our light if we want to and change the position of it. This next one down here is the height. That's how close or far away from your object the uh, light is. So you can imagine if you have a spotlight and you bring it really, really close to something, how that kind of changes uh, the way that it looks. So if we bring it um, all the way down, we're bringing our light closer. And if we bring it up, 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 we're moving it kind of farther away. So then uh, as a result, our, our shadow kind of changes as well. So uh, the last option down here is going to be softness. And this one is a little bit more difficult to tell what's kind of happening unless you've got ray tracing turned on, which is this little icon up here in the upper right. I will warn you before you turn this on that this can cause your computer's jet engines to get running because it's a little bit of an intense process. It does make your lighting look a lot nicer. So just make sure that you save before you do this and like, you know, uh, sometimes it takes a minute to kind of work. So I'm just going to tap it. It's going to work its magic. And you can see that it just kind of like really changes the look of the lighting on our object, right? But if I go down here to softness, I drag it up. Um, you can now see that with that uh, ray tracing turned on, you can see how it softens the shadow because it's kind of like creating a more like diffuse light. I'm going to turn that off so that uh, we can keep working uh, as we go here. And uh, it's, it's just kind of like more uh, more intense operation on my uh, computer. All right, so we've got this first one done. I'm actually going to move on now and try a few different perspectives now that I have this base down. Oh, I just added a, a stroke by accident. Let's remove that. Um, I don't try to model the whole object all at once uh, with like leaves and everything. It's just, it's too difficult. And you know, we've got different perspectives that we're working with for like the leaves versus the front of the strawberry. 
So I'm just going to hit Command C and Command F to copy and paste in front my original shape. And I'm just going to drag it over to my next artboard here. And I want to change and try a different perspective. For this one, let's say we want to have the strawberry like it's laying down flat on a surface. So instead of using an inflate this time, I'm going to go back to my object menu and I'm going to pick a revolve. And when I hit revolve, uh, crazy things are going to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to hit revolve and you're going to see that that is not the shape that we want to create. So I'm just going to, let's troubleshoot this. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to bring this shape down here to our uh, little, our little friend, the widget that's going to help us kind of see what's going on. And um, so with a revolve, if I, it's probably easier if I turn off the appearance for a second. So if I go into my appearance panel, if you t click on this little eye, it's going to hide the uh, effect so you can just see your original shape. So if we take a look at our original shape, what's happening with the revolve, and I'll scale this down a little bit, and we'll bring it over here, is it's actually revolving the shape sort of around the, I'll switch the fill and stroke, around our y-axis. So if we do that, it's going to take the whole shape and spin it around. So imagine like spinning it around from here, right? So we're basically making kind of like a strawberry donut in a way. Um, so if we switch back, if we want to create the correct blueprint for this to create the correct shape so that a revolve revolves and creates just the strawberry, we need to split it in half. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to grab our rectangle tool over here and using smart guides, I'm going to align uh, with the center of my strawberry and just draw a rectangle, just covering it up, right? Covering up the half of the strawberry. Now I'm going to, with my selection tool, drag both. And I can use the uh, shape builder tool this time to cut the strawberry in half. So I'm going to select the shape builder. Normally when you use the shape builder, it merges uh, shapes together. But in this case, I'm going to hold down alt or option. And when I do that, you can see my cursor changes to have a little minus sign. So it's subtracting instead of adding those shapes. And when I drag across both of them, it's just going to remove that uh, half based on the, if I just hit Command Z, based on where that line is of my rectangle. So I'm just going to drag and remove. And now we've got half a strawberry. Now, when we select our strawberry shape again and go back to our appearance panel and turn that back on, you can see that now our revolve is creating the correct strawberry shape. And let's say we want to have this sort of laying down. I can scroll on down and in our um, object uh, tab here, we've got some preset options. We can pick one of the, uh, oops, not that one, sorry, isometric top. So we're looking at it from the top. So now our strawberry is kind of laying down um, on the surface instead of being um, sort of straight in front of us, right? Change the rotation. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to drag my strawberry onto that artboard. Um, I can scale it up just by grabbing the corner and holding shift and we can scale it back up to kind of like the size of our other one. Alrighty. And then uh, let's make one more kind of base strawberry shape. So I'm going to go back over and select my original strawberry. Command C and Command F will copy and paste in front. And I'm going to slide it on over to this artboard. So now we've got our strawberry over here. And the last option that I want to kind of experiment with is we're going to go back up to the top of our objects tab and we're going to try and extrude. So I'm going to hit extrude and uh, like I said, because we're from the front with our original, it's not really going to look like anything is happening yet. But um, if we kind of take our uh, tool here, this little uh, rotation uh, widget, you can see that as I hover over it, I'm going to get different options. I can rotate along the X or I can rotate along the Y, uh, kind of referencing again our little uh, widget down here to show you what's happening when we do that. So let's say we want to have our strawberry um, laying uh, like standing on end. So in that case, we're going to have our original shape here and we're going to choose like a left or a right uh, position. Let's go with isometric right. Um, so that's going to give us something that's kind of like takes our original shape and turns it so that when we extrude um, using the depth here, it's going to extrude from the Z axis every single time we use an extrude. So if we take a look over here, the Z axis is coming towards us. So we're, as we extrude along that depth along the Z axis, 
depending on our rotation, is going to change the way that that extrude appears. So isometric right, it's going to appear that it's extruding from like, it, the, the shape is uh, like side to side, versus if we look at uh, top, when we do that, it's going to kind of be laying flat because of the rotation, and it's going to um, extrude along the Z, which happens to be moving the uh, shape kind of like out, up and down. I hope that that makes sense. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions in our chat um, here on Behance or on YouTube. You can join us every day live in the chat at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. So I'm going to switch back over to isometric right. And it's looking a little flat still, right? We need to make some adjustments. Um, we can't, the extrude by default has a flat um, surface, but we can very easily change that by applying a bevel. So underneath our uh, sort of depth options here, um, I'm gonna turn on a bevel. So I'm just gonna tick on that little box. And by default, it's gonna apply a classic bevel. So I'm going to change that to a round bevel using this drop down here. And personally, how I like to work with the bevel is um, I like to increase the width and height on the bevel and decrease the um, depth to have it be really thin. So the uh, I'm going to let the bevel essentially determine how wide my shape is. So let me kind of demonstrate here. If I go down and I increase the width and I increase the height, you can see that that's like really puffing out my strawberry. And then I can go back up here and I can bring the depth all the way down. That's going to get rid of that kind of weird flat edge. And somebody in our live chat is asking about the shadows, which is important because I actually just noticed that my shadows are not visible and there's a reason for that. So uh, if we go down to our um, light, we're going to go over to our lighting tab. We actually need to change the position of our shadow. Currently, let me go back to my object tab really quickly. Um, I need to do one more thing. I need to change my bevel from being on one side, it's currently flat on the back, to being on both sides. So I'm going to scroll down under bevel and choose bevel both sides. And that's going to make my strawberry round all the way around. And now you can see the shadow. However, it's not positioned how I kind of want it to be. It's positioned behind my object. So it kind of looks like my strawberry is standing against a wall. If I go down to lighting um, and I scroll back down to those shadow settings, Instead of having it be behind the object, I'm going to uh, click here and I'm going to change it to be below my object. So now my strawberry is kind of sitting on that surface instead of kind of standing against a brick wall. <laughs> so uh, there we go. We've got three strawberries in uh, three different perspectives. Now, like I said, I wanted to get kind of like the base down. I'm going to go back to the first one and now we can start to plan out how we're going to build our details. So we've got seeds and we've got leaves that we need to add to strawberries and we can actually use the same shape to create both of them. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to my objects uh, or my um, shape tools over here. Clicking and holding down, I'm going to switch to an ellipse and I'm just going to click and drag holding shift to draw out a perfect circle. Now I'm going to do all of this kind of off on my the outside of my artboards these are my artboards, these white squares. Anything that's on those is going to export when I, you know, go to export a PNG or a JPEG. Anything outside is kind of like my sketch area. So I've got this circle out here so I can kind of plan how I want to draw these shapes. We can very easily make a seed and a leaf shape by switching to our direct selection tool. I'm going to click on this very bottom point. And I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. Um, so got a point, we've got to kind of elongate it, starting to look like a seed. The other thing that I want to do is go up here in the convert options in our direct selection tool with our point selected. And by def how it's set right now is it's set to have the anchor points be smooth. That's why you can see those anchor handles sticking out. If I click over here to corner, it's going to remove those anchor handles and give us a corner point, which is going to look more like a seed or a leaf. So let's go in here and let's double click. Uh, I actually just learned recently that strawberries have yellow seeds. I did not even realize that. So we're going to pick a nice yellow. And then we can use the exact same shape here for our um, leaf. So I'm going to go Command C, Command F to paste in front and drag it over. And we'll change this one double clicking to a green. So we'll go with like a nice green color. All right, so we've got a leaf and we've got a seed. Now let's go take a look at that diagram again for our um, 
leaves, we need to do, think about the perspective that we need to draw our blueprint from. And for our strawberry, we drew it from the front. But for our leaves, we're actually going to be seeing our leaves from the top down. So um, we're going to be drawing this out as if you're looking from the very top of the strawberry straight down so that we can get that kind of like shape. And then we'll tilt it using the rotation tools into perspective. So I've got my first leaf here. And I'm just going to go back and draw out a circle holding down shift um, with the ellipse tool to create an area for like a stem, if that makes sense. Just kind of move it into place. I'll select my leaf with the selection tool and then I'll go to object. I will go to repeat and we're going to use a radial repeat to use our, to make our leaves. Now you'll notice when we do that, that it's got our leaves facing the wrong way. It's very easy to fix. I'm going to double click into here to isolate that. I'm going to hover over the corner, holding down shift. I will just rotate that around to have the leaves facing out. When you're work, when you double click, you're actually going into editing all of the shapes to the rate you'll repeat. So you can very easily just kind of like rotate things around and they're all going to follow. So to get out of this special isolation mode, you can see we're in here. You can either click on this arrow or just hit the escape key and it's going to take you back out. All right, so I'm going to drag my uh, leaves up so that they're kind of over the center of my uh, stem here. And the last thing that we're going to do, you can do a lot of things with a repeat, but I'm just going to drag this little arrow slider. And I'm going to bring it down to decrease the number of leaves. You can drag it up if you wanted more, but we're going to go down. So here's where that group thing is going to come in handy that I was talking about earlier. I'm going to drag out my layers panel. And uh, if you, you know, you can find this in under window and layers, but we're going to take our original strawberry group and I'm going to use command C and command F to copy and paste in front. In my layers panel, if this is closed, you can click on these little arrows to open things. So I'm going to open up my group by clicking that arrow and you can see in here that inside of our group, our strawberry does not have the 3D effect applied. It's applied to the group. So anything that we drag into here, so if we click on our ellipse, holding down shift, click on our radial repeat, and drag these into that group, it's going to apply our settings to that leaf. Uh, we don't actually need this strawberry anymore, so I'm just going to hit delete. And now this group here is just our leaves and stem for our strawberry. So we can bring it over into place right over the top of our strawberry. And again, using our widget, we'll determine that we need to rotate this along the x-axis to tilt it down. So we'll zoom in. And you have two options here. Under our object menu, you can either rotate it using uh, the x here, or if you hover over, you can see that you can rotate along that middle. It'll actually tell you that you're rotating along the x there. Um, the last thing that I really like to do um, while we're kind of in here is I like to use the perspective a little bit. So as I pull the perspective up, you're going to see it's going to make those leaves in the back kind of smaller as if they're going back in space and bring the leaves into the front with a little bit more depth like they are uh, coming towards us. If you want to, you can go up here now um, with our, uh, bring our depth to like flatten them a little bit and bring our um, volume down a little bit since they're a little bit large. And you can go ahead and you can do the same thing with the uh, seeds. You can add, an, you can copy and paste this group um, you can start to kind of place these, obviously scaling them down, and you'll want to move them inside of the group, um, just like we did with the uh, other thing, delete out that strawberry. The one thing you want to note about this is that you're going to want to turn that shadow off in your uh, lighting settings as you put those in. And there we go. Once you're ready, you can go to File, Export, Export for Screen, and it will save out all of your artboards. And then you can upload them to our Discord. You can find that link again in the uh, description below here. Um, and then once you are ready to upload, navigate to the Daily Creative Challenge channel in the DCC Feedback channel. You can just drag your image right into this um, little box here. And then you can hit um, you know, enter and send your message and uh, share your work with everybody and see what everybody's been working on in the Discord. It's a great way to uh, hang out and get some feedback. Uh, feel free to keep going with the uh, details on each of these strawberries on each of the perspectives, but that is going to be <laughs> all the time that we have for um, today's challenge. Thank you so much for joining me um, for a illustrator illustration challenge. We went over object and lighting settings for the 3D and materials, as well as some um, 
Shape Tools and the Radio Repeat. We're live every day at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time at behance.net slash Adobe Live and on the Adobe Live YouTube. So stay tuned after me for uh, more live content. Bye, everyone.